Hey everyone, yesterday I showed you how I do face recognition with Home Assistant and Azure Cognitive Services. So this is a picture of my uh, office. I just want you to see uh, that I have a camera in here that's at eye level. So this camera will take a picture each time I enter the office. Okay, so if we go back to the video, you can see that as soon as I walked in the office, the light turned on <clears throat> and now the camera starts taking pictures of myself every 500 milliseconds. And if, uh, because yeah, I'm not walking with the face uh, turned right the, directly towards the camera. So uh, it will try to take a few pictures, do face recognition on them. And if it recognizes me, then it will turn on the laptop. As you will see, the, the laptop should turn on in a few seconds. Okay, and now Alexa will ask me if I want the summary of the day. Okay, and now I can say yes or no. Okay, and as soon as I reply that, Alexa will give me the summary of the day. Okay, now let's see how I do this. So as I said, I'm using Node-RED and yeah, let me reload the flow. Okay, so this is where it all starts. When I open the door or I close the door, uh, because sometimes I go in the office and I close the door behind me and it was already opened. So uh, once I do that between 5 a.m. and 12 p.m., then it will check if it's me in the office. This is a subflow that I created. So uh, things here are pretty simple. I prepare a, a HTTP request, which is a simple get. Okay. And this is a API that I made in uh, .NET 5, which sits on a Raspberry Pi in my office. And it will uh, connect to Azure Face Recognition, send it some pictures, and uh, yeah, if it's me, then I have this payload returned. Is me equals true. I also have the number of persons and the number of identified persons. Uh, but if this is true, then the flow will continue. If not, it will stop. Okay, uh, the camera is uh, connected to the Raspberry Pi and I retrieve images using uh, Motion Eye. Okay, so. I prepare this request and if payload dot is me, so payload is the entire JSON, is me is the property. If the property is true, then it's output one, otherwise it's output two. <clears throat> if you go back here, output one is uh, is this one. So it will turn on the office live strip. Actually, this happens even if it's not me. It can be my wife or... <clears throat> someone else, I want the light to be turned on. Then it will turn on the laptop and it will ask me for the summary of the day. <clears throat> this uh, is something that I do with the Alexa integration for Home Assistant. Uh, there's this ac uh, Alexa actionable notifications that you can use. Okay, so uh, this service uh, requires this data. So I have to give it a text and this is what Alexa asked me. Good morning, Bogdan, do you want the summary of the day? I have to give it an event ID and the Alexa device where I want to play the message. In my case, it's the office echo data. Okay, so remember this ID because this will be used in here where I listen for Alexa events. Okay, so for each event type, uh, Alexa actionable notification. Uh, this is the one that we're interested in. Okay, so this is just a switch and if it's the summary of the day, then I also check that the response is yes, because I could answer no. You know, I don't want the the summary. In that case, it will do, not do anything. But if I want it and I say yes, it will retrieve some information from Home Assistant. For example, these are the completed tasks. Uh, they are retrieved from Todoist. This is the CO2 level from a sensor. This is the office temperature, uh, productivity score from rescue time and standing up today. 
Uh, here I uh, have some uh, contact sensors and the standing desk, so I know how much I am sitting down or standing up in any given day. Okay, after that I build a message, and as you can see, uh, I'm using uh, speech synthesis markup language. So this is a sentence, for example, and uh, I can also use emotion. So if the productivity score is less than 60, then Alexa will be disappointed, otherwise it will be excited. Uh, I can also uh, give the intensity, for example, let's, uh, let's change this. Okay, let's put it to excited, whatever happens, and let's give it the intensity high. Okay, and you'll see what's the difference. Okay, so I'm going to invoke this. Sure. Okay. Now listen to this. You completed three tasks so far, and you have seven remaining tasks until the end of the day. I know. Your productivity score is 80, and so far you've been standing up 93% of the time. The office temperature is 27 degrees Celsius. Have a nice day. Yeah, so that was Alexa being happy. Okay, and uh, once I build that message, I send this to this uh, subflow that I also created for myself. Here I can ask Alexa to whisper or to broadcast. I can specify the message in here, but in this case I specify the message in uh, the message property. Okay, uh, I can also select where I want the message to be broadcasted. Uh, in this case, I only want it uh, in the office, but I can also select occupied rooms based by motion sensors or in any other given room of the house. I can select uh, sounds or to be also notified on my uh, laptop speakers, on my phone and so on. So I guess uh, this is pretty much it about the node red flow. Uh, the API, yeah, that's uh, a .NET API. It's pretty basic, so uh, this is the controller. Okay, the request comes in here. Yeah, let me, uh, I think I can give you a demo. So I just want to show you that uh, this is basic functionality that you'll find in the Cognitive Services repository on GitHub. They have a bunch of samples that you can use. Okay, the API started, and I'm just going to select that endpoint, try it out, execute. Okay, now let's go inside. So this is the image path that I have for my camera. Uh, I'm going to show you this in the browser. Yeah, so this is me right now recording. Okay, uh, so what I do here is to detect faces in that image. Okay, I get a stream of the picture and I send this stream to the face client in Azure. Okay. Uh, I have to select the recognition model and the detection model. I can also uh, take uh, attributes like if I want to see uh, if I'm angry or uh, happy okay and I wait 500 milliseconds I do this while I have uh, an exception or if I haven't received the retry count or the detected faces count is zero in my case a face was detected so it will exit the loop okay and we can see that it found one faces I return that list of faces. Yeah, we add the idea of the face here, and then we ask uh, Azure to identify the faces in that picture. And identify result. Uh, it has a list of candidates, and in my case, this is the person ID. Actually, this is my person ID, and the confidence, it's 94%. Okay, but before I uh, 
uh, before I implemented this in Home Assistant, I had to train a model with some pictures of me, and I had to retain that uh, that person ID. So uh, here's what I do here. Okay. So I ask uh, Azure to give me the person found in that picture. So this is my name. These are the pictures that I uh, used to build the, the training model. And that's the person ID. Okay, let's see what's displayed in here. So person Bogdan Bursta is identified for face in this picture, confidence 94%. That's it. Now it will return this payload. And if it's me, I also set some vars in Home Assistant using a .NET uh, library called, let me see where it is, uh, homeassistant.net. I don't think I have it in here. Yeah, this one, homeassistant.net. So I just uh, initialize uh, the client factory, I get the service client and I call the service var dot set and the entity ID and the value because I may do some automations if the office person is me or someone else okay and that's enough you can see the payload here and that's pretty much it I let me see if I forgot anything to mention let's hope not yep so this is the entire flow. Uh, I also published the Node-RED flow in, uh, in just in GitHub. Okay, and you'll find this link in the description. So you can just uh, go in Node-RED, click on here, import, paste the JSON here, and you can import the same stuff in your Node-RED instance. That's it, I hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to see more cool automations like this, don't forget to subscribe because I have a bunch of other stuff to add to YouTube soon. Thank you.